Welcome everyone to Product One Technicals web series. My name is Tulani Mazibuko and today's topic is additive manufacturing. So what we've done uh, last week was to showcase what you call augmented reality inside Creo Parametric, our 3D design engineering software, which is Creo Parametric. So what you see here is a more improved version of the design that we used last week. So what we have in this design is the objects or some of the components are designed to be 3D printed. What we've got there is a component that displays what we call a lattice, which is what I'm going to show how to create as well. So this is just to make the part a lot lighter, but also still strong. So let's get started. So if I take this component here, I want to make it a lot lighter, but I also want it to still be strong enough to be able to withhold, to withstand the weight or the force that it's going to experience in, in the field. This is what I will do. We all agree that for cases like this where I need to uh, minimize the mess, I need to create a couple of cutouts, I need to remove material. The only issue is with this is the part is now a lot weaker. So in order for me to make this component a lot lighter, I can actually use now inside Creo Parametric using the additive manufacturing extension, I can actually add what we call a lattice. So how you define a lattice is pretty simple. All you do is you pick the boundaries in which your lattice is actually going to act and the value of your lattice or the size of it. When you preview this, it's actually going to show you how your lattice structure looks like. Okay, what we've seen now is all these dangling beams, I don't want to see them there. I need to remove them and to remove those is just a simple thing of selecting a radio button to say remove dangling beams. Of course, that will mean that now I have no dangling beams thereof. So this lattice structure that you see in front of you is basically a 3D type lattice. There is other options as well. You can actually choose two and a half D lattice. And this is uh, how a two and a half D lattice will actually look like. Of course, you can also tweak and change the values or even the design of your 2.5D lattice. But for the purpose of this demonstration, we're only going to deal with the 3D lattice type. Okay, so we'll go back to the shape that we want for our, our 3D lattice, and we'll also define the cross-sectional area and the ball diameter in the middle for our lattice design. And that's pretty much what we've seen and that's uh, what we're going to be stuck with for now. Then I might actually say there are certain areas within this particular lattice that are going to have so much uh, force or so much uh, uh, loading. So I can actually change the density of the lattice and how you do that is very simple. I can actually say, how about I add a density for my lattice and I will pick whatever is the values which I want this lattice to actually transform. And just like that, it will display how this lattice will, will change. You will see there in probably almost halfway, I've got a thicker geometry of that particular lattice. Now I no longer need this entity, I'm gonna take that away. I can also say, take the position of where the start point of my lattice is, and this is the final result. Now that I've actually finished creating my lattice, I now need to see if it's actually strong enough. That will mean that I need to take this into structural analysis. So I'm going to use what you call Creo Simulate, which is our structural and thermal analysis uh, software. It can be integrated to Creo, just like you will see just now, or it can also be standalone for somebody that is an analyst within the organization. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do for the sake of time. 
I can also change that lattice to be a simplified geometry. The simplified geometry within Creo Parametric will look like that. But if I take this into Creo Simulate, that's basically how that lattice will actually look like. Bear in mind, I am going to touch on Creo simulation in uh, uh, weeks to come. So on this particular exercise, all that we're going to be doing is we'll be specifying a static analysis within Creo simulate. So how do you assign a basic static analysis? Of course, you just need to define uh, you need to define your boundary conditions or what we call constraints. You can define your material. So there's a wide range of materials that you can actually choose from. We'll just leave it out as plastics for now. And we'll pick where the force is or where the load is. So we'll just say maybe 100 newtons for this particular component. Uh, these are just uh, values. They don't mean anything at the moment. And then you run your basic static analysis. And how you do that is you say file new static analysis. And just like that, when you run this, it's going to take considerably shorter due to the fact that we're using what we call idealized elements. OK, now this is actually finished. You can now view the results. OK, bear in mind the results, they showcase von Mises stress. They show displacement and, of course, a vector plot for your principal stress. Now, let's say I am happy with the result. I can now take this into 3D printing and directly print it inside Creo Parametric if I've got the Stratasys printer as well. Okay, so uh, what you can also do, you can run an optimization study. This is where now you move the geometry of the lattice to the areas where there's high stresses. Okay, so that you don't guess like we've done just now. You can actually move the thicker areas into where there might be issues. Okay, so but for this, we're just going to take a conditions that we're happy with the lattice. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this full geometry because I need to 3D print this. So how do I do that? I will simply actually say take this, prepare for 3D printing, and there's my part. I can auto position this, I can pattern, I can print multiple of these uh, at a time, and I can also say display supporting material. So when I display the supporting material, it will show me how this part will actually build up. And I get to see how this component will grow in my 3D printing environment. So now that I, I've actually done this and I don't have a Stratasys printer, all I have is just a, a simple maker bot and it's currently busy uh, printing a larger version of what I've already attempted to do first time around. So that's essentially what uh, additive manufacturing is inside Creo Parametric. Please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, please also follow the details uh, down below for any further uh, questions. Until next time, thank you very much.